Lenny. Lenny. No, I will not sing now. No, I will never sing on the spot. With, I'm talking roosters, pigs. Okay, so let's get started, shall we? My hair is kind of starting to get greasy, but it's not completely greasy, so I always start off with dry shampoo. I am a dry shampoo girl. I have the Batiste dry shampoo and blush flirty, for, flirty floral. I go through dry shampoo very quickly because I have pretty greasy hair. So this is just the most convenient one for me to buy. There are way better ones out there, but like as far as like ingredients, but this one really sucks up all the oils in my hair. And I usually just let this sit in my hair while I do my makeup. So today I'm gonna do a little bit more of an effort in my makeup look since we're doing a Q and A. And I'm doing a full filming day today. Like I am taking the entire day to film, I think three or four videos. I'm gonna just try to knock them out because I actually have the time so i asked you guys in the community tab if you guys ever like want to ask me questions um whenever i do a q a i always do it in the community tab of youtube because i'm able to kind of keep track of it there um i know a lot of people do it on instagram but a lot of people on my instagram don't watch my youtube so i don't like to put a question box there because the people that are normally asking don't watch my youtube videos because i don't really promote my youtube channel that often on my instagram and i don't know why i just don't um, but if I'm ever going to do a q and I always put it on the community tab in YouTube. So the other day I was, uh, what was I doing? Oh, I was trying to edit a video and while I was doing it, I was like, oh, let me put the, like a q and option in the community tab. So I got some questions. So I figured I would go through the questions, answer them and get ready for this full like content day i'm gonna do like i said a little bit more makeup than normal just so i can like have fun with it so on my face right now all i have is my facial oil i'll leave the one that i use linked down below it is the only skincare product that i use so yeah i don't use really anything else no moisturizer no eye cream no nothing just the facial oil there's two um questions in this video what is your idea of a perfect day so i'll answer that one first my idea of a perfect day is day of the week sunday sunday is my favorite day of the week I don't know what it is about the energy and the vibe of Sunday. I don't know if any of you guys can agree. Sunday just feels different. It feels better. It feels cozy. It feels calm. It feels just nice. For my foundation, I'm using the Best Skin Ever from Sephora collection. I use the color 33.5Y. This is really the only foundation I've been wearing whenever I wear foundation. Um, and this brush is a Morphe M439. I've been very into brushes lately and I don't know if it's because I haven't really been wearing foundation during the holidays is when like I feel like we wear more makeup more because it's more of a glitzy glam type of season so I've worn makeup a couple more times um, lately so I've just been like obsessed with my brushes this foundation blends in so well it's a little bit olivey a little bit than what my skin tone is right now. I get, I pull a little bit more red um, whenever I'm in the sun. But anyways, back to the question. So yeah, my favorite day of the week is Sunday. So I feel like my perfect day would automatically fall on a Sunday because I love Sunday so much. It would be sleeping in with no like real to-do list, like no itinerary, no reason to set an alarm, just sleeping in until I wake up, maybe going for a coffee run, with tyler maybe um we usually drink our coffee at home but on sundays we always like to either walk to a coffee shop and get like a croissant or like a pastry and this is the can't stop won't stop concealer um we'll go with lenny we'll get a coffee whatever whatever so if we were to do that that's like one of my favorite things we will 
go for a walk and find a new coffee shop that we haven't tried which i love that get a croissant and then come home and probably just like chill for a little bit the other day we had like kind of like a day date and we went to bj's it was super random we went to the mall and then we went to bj's right after and we split a caesar salad and a sandwich and it was like we had so much fun together it was awesome so i would love to do something like that like maybe grab like a good lunch somewhere um and it doesn't have to be anything big like tyler doesn't eat a lot i don't understand how like i'm the one i eat more than tyler does um he doesn't eat a lot so he doesn't really think about his meals often um i do i'm always thinking about what i want for dinner what i want for lunch what i want for breakfast the next day like i love food he's not like a food person he doesn't really care crazy i know um so lunch for sure and it would be something probably small like we probably share kind of like how we did at panera the other day share something small that won't make us too full for dinner later on just something easy and something small probably have like some prosecco or mimosas and then we love coming home on sundays and taking naps so a nap would be involved a really nice cozy nap and then if we were out let's say i would love like home shopping like anything having to do with target ikea home goods anything like that would be perfect um and we don't even have to buy anything just like going around and browsing and seeing the things would be super super fun and then i love having dinner at home on sundays like saturdays i can understand like ordering out or whatever but sundays i don't know what it is i love eating dinner at home and if we could if the like the weather was a little bit cooler and we could probably like grill outside even if we were just doing like burgers and fries grilling and sitting outside with the fire pit going music that's like literally my definition of a perfect day right there very slow easy calm cozy days like that are my absolute favorite and then the second part of her question is what is a hidden talent that nobody knows i don't know if it's not that anybody doesn't know but i don't really like talk about it like but people do know it's not like a hidden thing but this would really be the only thing that i could think of and it is that i sing i have sung my entire life no i will not sing now no i will never sing on the spot i won't sing just because someone says hey sing no that no absolutely not i am very very shy um i don't like a lot of people looking at me i don't like a lot of attention so singing on the spot has never been something that i have done will do but I was in choir my entire life. I am an alto, alto two to be exact, if you know like voice parts. Um, in When I was younger, I was in a church choir and then all through, I think middle school, once I got to high school is when I took it like really seriously. And I was in choir in my freshman year. And then once you got to your sophomore year, you had to try out to be in choir. So I tried out that's when they well i was already an alto at that time but i tried out and i made it officially as an alto and in my sophomore year i think i was only in concert choir which is was just like a performance choir we would perform at disney we would perform in the school we would perform everywhere and then by the time i got to my junior year i got into an advanced women's choir so i was in three choirs at the same time i would stay after school almost every day our advanced choir was called belvoir that was the advanced women's choir and then i was in a advanced advanced choir once we got i think i got to my senior year and it was called um the freedom freedom something and that was just 12 of us so we were really really small you had to try out again and i was an alto in that choir as well so that is some of like my best memories ever it literally by my senior year i had three periods of just singing it was fourth fifth and sixth period were literally choir that's it we sang for um there were these things I, what, what do we call them for valentine's day people could pay us i think it was five dollars and we would go up to the person that they wanted to so let's say it was a guy buying it for a girlfriend or even like friends did it for each other we would go up and we would sing out of the list of, I think it was like 10 songs. And I remember No One by Alicia Keys was one of them. I will never forget that. And we would literally just go up to them and start singing. What was it called? 
sing a gram I, something like that it was it was funny i can't i literally can't believe i did that sometimes but some of my greatest friends who i'm still friends with were in choir with me i traveled so much to perform i remember we went to dc we went to atlanta um we won so many awards like we were really 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 good when i was in high school and i was like very much like a choir dork like loved it so much best part of my life was that um and obviously like i still sing for fun but i don't perform or do anything like that but i absolutely loved choir i wish i would have done more earlier but i was a kid i didn't know what i was doing and she said love your videos and thank you so much next question uh would love a Q&A with Tyler, how you met. I'm pretty sure we have done a Q&A with how we met. Yeah, I have so many Q&As. So if you scroll through my Q&As um, or just videos that I answer questions, there's definitely one in there. But if you guys want a Q&A with me and Tyler, like an updated one, I will leave maybe within the next couple of days, I'll leave a um, thing in the community tab and you guys can ask there. And maybe we can do like a mukbang, like a car eating. We'll go to like Taco Bell, eat and answer the questions. Did you and Tyler save a slice of your wedding cake to eat on your anniversary? So no, we did not. You guys know a lot of my wedding was not traditional. Like 99% of my wedding was not traditional and I don't like cake. So we originally wanted to have a gelato cart while we were in Italy. We tried to get one. I contacted the Airbnb that we stayed at to see if they could find one and there was just none that we could get unfortunately um so our wedding cake was tiramisu and that wedding cake was destroyed devoured you can't really like save that <laughs> really plus we were in europe and we had to travel after italy to amsterdam and spain so there was no way that we were going to be able to save really anything um so no, we did not save it. We know how much you love Amsterdam. Is there any other place or country that's on your bucket list to visit? Yes. I am dying to go to Copenhagen. That's like next on my list. We were going to go to Copenhagen um, instead of Spain, but Tyler really wanted to go to um, Barcelona. So we did that. And then I really wanted to go to Mallorca. So we went there after Barcelona, which I think was like a 45 minute flight. It was really, really fast. Other than... Copenhagen. I would love my dream like number one dream location has always been Egypt. I find it so intriguing that culture and just like Seeing something that you only hear about like when it comes to, like pyramids and stuff. I feel like would be So humbling and just like grounding there isn't really anywhere in Asia that I'm like dying to go Not that I wouldn't like I'd go anywhere, but as far as like bucket list a lot of my bucket list is in europe i want to go to switzerland so bad i was actually supposed to go a couple years ago with the company that i worked for um i worked for a switch swiss watch company that is from switzerland and the family still owns the company so they fly everybody out after you're with the company for i think like two years to show you like the factory and stuff and i ended up leaving to work at sephora like two weeks before my two years. So I never ended up getting to go to that, but I've always wanted to go to Switzerland. What is my guilty pleasure? I don't know if I really have any. I don't know if I really have like a guilty pleasure per se. Let me grab some lashes real quick. I guess I can say guilty pleasure wise, like I love going through a Taco Bell drive through and getting like a ton of stuff on the menu or I love ordering like Thai food, getting a ton of different things. I'm very much the person that like wants to order half the menu just to try everything. Kind of wasteful if you're not eating all the leftovers, but I just, I love trying all that stuff. And then um, like binging a show while I eat it, whether it's like an old show, it's usually old shows because I'm not someone that like really ventures out and watches new shows or movies. I am, I think, I think they said that it's like an anxiety thing that like you don't want to watch a new show because you don't want to deal with not knowing what happens and that is fully me i watch the same like five shows one tree hill friends schitt's creek gossip girl emily in paris that's like a newer one um i'm using these lashes right here just in case anybody asks these are ardell wispies just regular wispies oh demi wispies just kidding just some easy natural lashes. I don't really wear natural. 
I don't really wear lashes too often anymore, so I just go for the most comfortable ones. What made your family move out of New York? I currently live in New York, but I've been going back and forth about moving out of state because I'm scared. <laughs> um, so it was my mom's choice. We moved when I was six. My mom hated the cold and my aunts, so a lot of people don't know this, but when we moved out of New York, we first lived in Tennessee. I have no idea why, what sense it made. We lived in the middle of nowhere. It was so bad that my dad actually left back to New York. And he was like, I can't do this because my dad moved to, moved to New York when he was 17 from Puerto Rico. And all he knew was New York City. So he was like, I can't do this. So he would go back and forth from here to New York all the time because he hated the country. Like we quite literally lived in the country. My mom said it's because she was over the snow, which I, I get it. I get it because that snow is brutal. Her sister's moved to Tennessee because one of my uncles is military. So we actually lived in a military city. Makes no sense because we do not have military. My father did not serve in the military, but we lived in a military city called Clarksville, Tennessee. Quite literally, when I say the middle of nowhere, I mean the middle of nowhere. The houses were super spread apart. I remember my older sisters, they took my older sisters their junior and senior year out of high school. I would have, I would have killed my mom. I would have left. I would have been like, nope, I'm going back to New York. And my older sister actually did. She left back to New York and lived with my grandmother because they hated Tennessee so bad. And I don't even, I don't blame them. I don't blame them at all. Um, and then we lived there for a year and a half and then we moved to Orlando and we moved to Orlando because we came, we went on a Disney trip, like as a family. And my mom fell in love with the palm trees. That's what got my mom the palm trees. And that's what gets a lot of people. Then we moved to Orlando when I was in third grade, like the middle of third grade. So I bounced around a lot when I was in elementary school because I started in New York, then I shifted to Tennessee, and then I finished in Orlando and then my other my older sister still stayed in New York and then eventually she ended up moving down here So now everybody is down here except for my second oldest sister She's in New York because her husband is in New York and they're actually about to move down here They're in the process of building a house over here. Um, and then I decided to move up there like as an adult um, I took a job promotion that led me up there i was dating somebody that lived in new york at the time so it just ended up like perfect how many tattoos do you have do you have one regret or which is the most meaningful i genuinely don't know how many tattoos i have people ask me all the time and i don't know because not that i have like sleeves or anything they're just all small and scattered one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so i have twelve tattoos uh, oh, and 13. Uh, do I have one that I regret? Oh, wait, 14. Um, I don't want to say that I regret any of them. Would I remove any? Yes. And it would be the Eye of Horus right here. I got this when I was like 20. And it's just not me anymore. Like, at the time, I thought it was so cool. I'm still very intrigued by other people's cultures and religions and beliefs and things like that but this just doesn't fit who i am anymore and like my beliefs and like things like that so i would remove that one i don't regret it but i would remove it tyler said i cannot do a cover-up because it's so dark that it just wouldn't work my most meaningful is my last name on my ring finger me and all my sisters got it me and my younger sister got ours on my grandfather's birthday and my grandfather actually passed away five years ago oh my god more than that seven years ago and we are in love with my grandfather my grandfather was the best human being in the entire world he's the background of my phone i just i love him he was the best little man and he obviously obviously like his our last name came from before him but he's like he is who we are basically so i would say my most meaningful is cora and then after that would be this one here and it says keep me where the light is and i got that tattoo it's from probably my favorite um john mayer song gravity and i got it right after i was going through not even after in the midst of going through the hardest time of my life ever and i would always listen to the, listen to that part of the song where it said keep me where the light is and i would oh 
terrible, terrible time in my life. But it's one of my favorite tattoos, like, ever. Will you and Tyler revisit the place you got married when you hit a, a year of marriage? Is that something you would do if you're able to? I don't know if we'd go to the Amalfi Coast again. Not that there's anything wrong with it at all. Um, I just, I would go back to Italy, like, after, after, like, a year. We just, I've never really done like mainland Italy. Like I've never done Rome, just any of the mainland in Italy. We did have a layover once in Milan, but it wasn't long enough to really explore. So I didn't really get to explore anything, but I would love to, to go back to Italy. I, I think I'll always go, three places in Europe I'll always go, even though I've been is Italy, Amsterdam, and England. Love, those are like my, my three, I love them. So I have another one, advice to your 27 year old self how old i can't believe i'm 32 okay so 27 that was five years ago that was right around the time actually that i met tyler actually that is the year that i met tyler um what would i give what advice i just feel like to my younger self in general i would have told myself to save money, save money. Um, I never saved anything. 100% it would be save your money, even if it's 10 bucks. The way I talk about it now when I do the updates on like savings and all that, save your money, girl. Like save your money, worry more about your credit. When I was younger, I didn't give a shit. I don't think anybody does. Like it's really hard, especially like a Hispanic culture. I would say just like, A lot of Hispanic, black, people of color in general, we don't really learn much about finances and financial well-being and things like that because our parents were like just trying to fucking make it and my mom is so good with money. My mom has the best credit score I think I've ever heard of. Like my mom's credit score is like untouchable, but my mom never talked to us about saving. She never talked to us about investing she never talked to us about any of that stuff and it's because like realistically like she was probably just trying to survive so i wish i would have known more but i what was i supposed to do like it wasn't taught to me but i think that would be my biggest thing would be save your money and do something smart with your money from early like the fact that i was 27 i had a really great job that i loved i was working at sephora as a full-time makeup artist and I freaking loved it. I loved it. I was, again, full-time. I had benefits. I had everything. I had a good pay. Sephora, if you're working in the artistry, like if you're a makeup artist, you will make a pretty decent living for yourself, especially like if you're young and single. Once you get into management, you obviously make more, but I think I was making like $19 an hour as a makeup artist at Sephora. And then we got bonuses and stuff like that. So like as somebody that was younger, where most people were getting paid like, 15 an hour I was making a lot more just for my age and what I was doing for a living. What is your favorite clothing store or place to shop from if you had to choose one? Does Brennan and Core count? Maybe not. I feel like I look for certain things at certain places. So it's not like one specific place. I love Reformation jeans and Abercrombie jeans. Those are like my two favorites. When it comes to like bodysuits and like tops and stuff like that, I love click the label i feel like you can see it in like what clothes i share whenever i'm doing like any of my videos or hauls or whatever i love click the label um brenda lancora obviously for bodysuits because we we changed the game quite literally and then like dresses and stuff i love um super down they sell them at revolve I'm trying to think of like stores that I would walk into. There aren't really that many stores that I shop from. Like I don't shop often, but I would say those are like my top three. If I had to pick one place to get like everything from, I'd probably, I hate to say it, but I'd probably go on Revolve. And I hate like the obsession that everybody has with Revolve. I've shopped from Revolve, Revolve many times, but because of the specific brands that they have, like they carry Levi's, they carry Reformation, they carry Super Down, they carry Retrofet, they carry so many brands and then they carry so many shoe brands so like if i had to choose one marketplace of where i could get everything from 
it would be reformation or reformation revolve but not because of the obsession that everybody has with just shopping revolve i just like that it's a marketplace for other brands what kind of dog is lenny and did you guys adopt you know i love lenny so leonard is a purebred silver lab so apparently silver labs are extremely rare i didn't know this um but the way that people act when they see him and we're in public leonard gets a lot of attention a lot of stares a lot of people being like i've never seen that color lab before a lot of people think that he's a dog called a weimaraner which if you google it you'll you'll see it because i i didn't really get it at first but then when i look at him he does kind of look like one especially because of his coat like the color he is um but he is just a 100 percent purebred lab and we did not adopt him um we actually were not in the market for a dog we did not want a dog we wanted a dog eventually but we just weren't at the place where we were like all right like we knew the responsibility we already had four four cats so we are animal people we love animals we love our pets our pets are our family 100 but there's a lot of work they're a lot of money they are and cats even then cats are very low maintenance animals but with lenny we originally said if we ever got a dog eventually we would excuse me we would go to a animal rescue because we got almost all of our cats three of our cats were adopted we are very pro adopting animals i understand wanting to get like an f1 golden doodle or like purebred frenchies but there are so many beautiful sweet loving animals that need homes that i could not see myself paying thousands of dollars for a dog when there is a dog in a shelter that is days away from being euthanized or abandoned like when i see people like i see listings for dogs and it's like they were with their owner for 13 years but their owner moved and they couldn't have a dog you, you were with this animal for 13 years this animal was with you for 13 years and you're giving them away because where you live doesn't allow dogs screw where you live i'm not living somewhere that doesn't allow my animals like no and i understand like there's a situ there's many different situations where people just have to do it i could never do it the last place that i lived in literally our our landlord did not want animals and we were like okay well we this isn't the place for us then she literally said to me how much do you love your cats more than i love this house how's that like they are my family they are all we are all they know i could never imagine lenny getting old and dropping him off at a shelter i would no no absolutely not so we always planned on adopting a dog going in and seeing which one was the closest one to being euthanized or whatever and giving that one a good life for the little bit of time that it might have had left but leonard's parents i guess leonard's the people that owned leonard owned the mom and the mom had gotten pregnant and had i don't know x amount of puppies and tyler actually tattoos the couple that had leonard's parents so you know they sold all the all the puppies whatever and then one of the puppies got returned and that was lenny Lenny got returned because he was with a family that the mother, I think the, the wife was special needs or handicapped. I can't remember exactly what it was. And she just couldn't, or he, he couldn't like keep up with him. And if you know lab dogs, they are insanely high energy. They require a lot of attention, a lot of walks like you guys hear me in my vlogs all the time being like we have to take lenny for a walk because if we don't we don't take him for at least two walks a day he is restless annoying he's whining he needs to play like you need a lot of energy to have this type of dog we take him to the lake he loves to go swimming like it's a lot so they ended up returning him to the couple his name was blue when we got him of course um so the guy was getting tattooed by tyler and was like oh yeah we got one of the dogs returned and he's like D are you guys looking for a puppy and tyler literally called me and was like what do you think about getting a puppy and i was like what like we were not at all thinking about getting a dog and i was like what kind and he shows me pictures of baby lenny and i was like are you kidding and for the longest time i had been saying i wanted to get a dog and i wanted to name him leonard and nickname him lenny so i was like what kind of dog is it and he's like it's a boy he's a pure lab 
those dogs usually are like in the thousands of dollars which is not why we would get him at all but he was like i'm basically able to trade tattoos for the dog and I was, he was like this i don't know if this opportunity will come around again like this looks like a really good dog like a really good family dog blah 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 i think we were we were pretty close to getting engaged actually this was two months before we got engaged um so he was like i don't know like i'm really thinking about it because we might not get the opportunity to get this type of dog again and basically like for free so we got him the next day and tyler did i think a sleeve on the wife and like started sleeves or something on the husband and yeah he lived on a farm with that the people that we got him from he was on a farm with i'm talking roosters pigs horses um bunnies turkeys like everything the day we went to pick him up it was really funny because he was chasing he still he was a psycho even then he was chasing um the chickens and they were pissed but yeah, that's the story of Lenny. Uh, next question. What advice would you give someone who wants to pursue a styling career? So, hold on, let me put this in. So I can only speak about the way I went about things because that's the only experience that I have to offer. But um, I'm very, very new into the personal styling, you know, industry. And what I will say um, has, I guess, helped me is one, you need to showcase yourself you need to showcase your work you are your own billboard you're your walking billboard that's something that i remember from cosmetology school they always used to say you know if your hair doesn't look good how is anybody gonna want to get their hair done with you same with makeup when i worked at sephora all of the makeup artists we had to come in with a full face lashes everything because if your makeup doesn't look good why would anybody choose you to do their makeup and it's so true the amount of people that would come up to me at sephora and be like i want you to do my makeup because they liked my style of makeup was non-stop all the time so one is that you're you're your own walking billboard so if you're not already promoting yourself in a way that people will be like wow i really like her outfits or i like the way her she dresses or her style is so cool that's like the first thing um number two is do research on how to properly start a business i am very pro taking my time to make sure all the steps are done legally correctly like my business is established in the government like i don't cut corners when it comes to stuff like that i've learned through doing brenda lynn and cora like you need everything to be correct because i don't want the irs coming for me i don't want the government coming for me and telling me that i did any sort of fraud or anything like that um and then i did a ton of research and that is what i feel like is the best way to learn anything is you got to research it yourself you cannot expect anybody to give you the answers um i googled i googled a lot of um personal stylists in my area and just I wanted to see what their portfolios look like what their websites look like what type of product they offered um I was on TikTok I did like everything to make sure that I knew and then create yourself a really nice website um do some work for free if you have to just to get your your name out there get photos show your work and things like that but i guess that would be like the main thing how did you and brendalyn meet so we get this question all the time we've answered it so many times but um brendalyn actually reached out to me brendalyn had brendalyn and co before we ever met that was her business brendalyn and co she reached out to me because i was in the influencer space but like heavy not i don't consider myself an influencer at all because i don't um, compare me to influencers that are actually influencing and i'm not at all on their level because i just don't really care if i influence you to do something or buy something cool but that's not like my purpose that's not like my main source of purpose or income or work but brendalyn reached out to me i was the first influencer that she ever reached out to for like influencer marketing sponsorship whatever she had asked me if i had just moved back from i had just moved back from new york at the time i was working leonard i was working at the watch company that i was at for a really long time um and she asked me if she could basically give me clothes in exchange for posting and i was like yeah this is so cool like sure so she gave me i think like two pieces of clothing and i posted them and i sold them out and she wrote me and she was like oh my god i can't believe this like the pieces sold out I was like, oh, cool. Like, whatever. She wasn't paying me. I wasn't asking for money. She just gave me the clothes. Then she was like, do you want to do this again? And I was like, yeah, sure. This was in 2014. 2014 going into 2015. So she asked me if I wanted to do it again. And I was like, yeah, sure. So we did it a couple times. And everything that I kept posting would sell out. 
So after I'd say maybe about a year, she reached out to me and she was actually going, I think it was to Asia for part of her schooling, like to get her for, to finish her degree. And she couldn't continue like doing the business by herself. So she was like, would you be interested in joining me? Because you clearly know how to do something that I don't, which has to do with marketing, selling, all that stuff. And that's, that's all comes very natural to me because I've sold and been in retail and all of that my entire life. And obviously clothing is like my number one passion. So we ended up getting together. We were running the business as Brennan and Co still for all that time. And then in 20, 18 we officially switched it over so Brennan and Cora was filed as a business and yeah, that's how we met uh, Sorry, Leonard's gonna keep making noise because our neighbors just got home Lenny come here stop barking no barking papa No, okay, um If you could only have excuse me if you could only have six beauty products for the rest of your life life Which ones would you pick love your videos? Thank you so much. This is from mrs. G um six beauty products that's easy because I only use like five on a daily basis. Concealer, brow pencil. Would I put brow gel in there? Yes, brow pencil, brow gel. Actually, I'll do brow pencil. Um, a good mascara, a clear gloss, bronzer, and highlight. Those are my six. In five to ten years, where would e where would Ivana Cora like to be? Five to ten years, I will be getting into my 40s, if not already in my mid-40s. My biggest goal in life is just to be happy. That is all I want. I just want to be happy. Whatever that means to me. Whether it means having a lot of money or having a little bit of money and just being satisfied with that. Whether it's having Brennan and Cora flourish into this multi-billion dollar business or selling our patented idea to... Kim Kardashian and now me not having to work and just getting royalties off of that um, Having my home here. I would definitely want to get my home here Which that's gonna happen within like the next year having multiple homes in different cities. I would love that I you guys already know I want my home in the in the Netherlands huge huge role huge um goal Maybe with a kid Tyler and I are still very undecided on if we want kids or not. I'm actually shocked I didn't shocked. I didn't get any questions about kids. I'm shocked Maybe because I've said it so many times, like, stop asking me about kids. We don't know. Every once in a while, I'm like, maybe we'll have one. A lot of times, we're like, absolutely not. As of right now, I am very happy with no kids. I'm very happy that it's just me, Tyler, and our animals. I'm very happy that our focus right now is our marriage and our goals, like, our personal goals and our goals as a couple, not as parents or parents-to-be. Um, so maybe with a kid, maybe not. If I don't have children, I am perfectly okay with it. If I can't have children, I'm okay with it. If I have to adopt, if I eventually want a child, I'm okay with that as well. Um, and yeah, just happy. That's all I want out of life is just to be happy. And happy in whatever I believe happiness to be. Not in anybody else's standards. Um, how do you cope when you have a lot of anxiety or your day isn't going right? So this happens to me pretty often. I have... I don't like to say that I'm diagnosed like I'm not diagnosed or anything with anxiety because I've never gone to see anyone for it But I definitely suffer from anxiety. It could be in different ways than someone else does I there are times that my anxiety is crippling. I suffer from imposter syndrome there are days that I Can't do anything like it is like debilitating like I Feel on edge. I feel like I can cry at any second of the day and when I have days like that, I literally have to do nothing. Sweatpants, no makeup, lay in bed, lay on the couch. Sometimes I have to go for a walk, like going outside and walking really, really helps. Being outdoors in general really helps. Um, whenever I feel like I'm getting a little anxious or I feel kind of like that weight on my chest, I will go outside, sit outside. I'll go for a little walk. I'll drive around and sit outside at a coffee shop. I have to be alone. I heavily rely on alone time i cannot be around people all the time it drains me it sucks me of my energy even with tyler like this is my husband and he even knows like i need time by myself i cannot be with you every day 24 7 i will literally have a meltdown if i do so i just take it slow i allow myself to feel however it is that i need to feel for as long as i need to feel it and then once i snap out of it i'm back onto my my train how would you deal with catty coworkers? At this age, I wouldn't deal. Just I wouldn't pay any pay any attention to them. I don't got time. Top five favorite things to do in Florida: eat, 
Florida has really good restaurants. I'll give it that. I hate the beach and I hate the sun, so I don't even have anything to give you during the summertime. Um, during the winter is really pretty though because our winter is more like fall weather, so it's cool and brisk. Um, going downtown, I love being downtown. I love that I live downtown. Going to like the lake, going to the farmer's market, things like that. There isn't like a ton of things that I would say as far as Florida, like what to do because there's a lot to do, but a lot of it is touristy and I hate all of it. So I'm not the best person to ask <laughs> for that stuff. Um, any differences after getting married? I know you mentioned you're going to Puerto Rico. Any re recommendations on what places to visit or where to stay? So as far as getting married, there aren't any real differences because Tyler and I have lived together for years already. Um, we already, Leonard, we already considered ourselves each other's family. Um, I would say the main thing is just like solidifying the fact that like we are a team and everything we're doing is for the benefit of not only ourselves, but for the other person. Everything that we do is to benefit each other. And once we got married, really once we got engaged, it really felt like we're a team. Like we're doing this, we're choosing to do this together. We're one, that's really it. But I feel like it was kind of like that when we were just dating, it just kind of like solidified it. Um, and then as far as Puerto Rico, usually when I go, I'm with family. So I don't really have like lots of touristy things to do, but I would say like, Obviously, go see El Morro if you've never been to Puerto Rico. Um, go to Viejo San Juan. Um, try any of the food places that are in there. A lot of the times, they're a little commercialized. One of my favorite places is La Mallorca. And you get, it's like a very old Puerto Rican diner. Obviously, Puerto Rican. It's a little old diner. And you go in and you get press sandwiches made out of Mallorca. And they sprinkle the freaking sugar on top. So good with a coffee. It's delicious. I would say El Junque. I've actually never been to El Junque in my life, which is crazy. Um, but never been to El Junque, but I would recommend going. I would say La Placita at night, 100%. It's like a, a block party. It's really, really fun. And I usually spend a lot of my time on the East Coast because that's where my family is from. That's where I spent a lot of my summers. But there isn't, like, if you're a tourist, there isn't really much to explore there. It's more like campo. I don't even know how to, like, country, kind of. Um, and that's sort of like where my grandparents are from. That's where my father is from. So I don't really have as far as that, but I would say explore the West Coast. That's something that I really wanna do. I'd also say to get a catamaran, like pay for one of the catamarans and go to one of the surrounding islands, whether it be Palomino, Icacos, Culebra, any one of the islands, do the day ride, like do the boat ride. They take you into like the middle of the ocean and they let you like go scuba diving and you get to see all the fish. I don't do that because I am terrified of the ocean, terrified of sea animals. I don't do it, they scare the shit out of me. Um, but the boat ride is fun. I think drinks and food are included and then you get to explore the island and then at the end of the day You go back to the house. So that's really nice and that's in Fajardo. We're gonna try to do it this time But it's gonna be raining. So I don't even know if we'll be able to do it But definitely one of my favorite things to do in Puerto Rico. All right guys So this was a very long video, but I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I really enjoyed doing this q and I'm definitely gonna do another one in um one for me and Tyler. You guys can ask whatever questions you want. So just keep a lookout on my community tab if you're interested in asking a question to myself or Tyler or to both of us as a couple. But I hope you guys enjoyed. I will list all the products that I use down below and I will see you guys in the next video.